Hey everybody, we are here today to talk about Sepia Pick's assignment, Imprint, and we're actually gonna give it a go ourselves. So we're gonna talk about what you guys did, which was fantastic. I'm gonna You're get already started. Starting. Ready? Okay, all we're right. gonna start with a lemon, because okay. a lot of people did food. I think that this assignment reveals something really interesting about the materials around you. The materials right. around Sepiep when he started using bamboo and rattan were bamboo and rattan. Right. And what are we surrounded with? Uh, after my search through our house, yeah. we have a lot of waste materials. Right, we have a we lot, have of, a like, lot of like outdated technology, and styrofoam, styrofoam. Um, floppy disks, and we do have a lot of children's toys yeah. also, so don't tell them. Look, I won. I beat Sarah. <laughs> I beat Sarah at shallot imprinting. We're experimenting. No, it's about winning. Oh, oh God. Oh. <laughs> Get lit up. I didn't know. Oh, boy. <laughs> I did like how one um, of the responses used a fake flower, like yeah. a fabric flower, which I thought was sort of an interesting comment on our society that, like, coming across a fake flower is often easier than coming across a real, a real one. one. Yeah. But we did get a good real flower too, as it happens. So someone, someone made something really beautiful with something like this, round. remember? Yeah. yeah. There were a few, uh, there was a jar yeah. that was really nice. Um, I, but I'm not. Meg and Lily did a lemon, but yeah. their lemon was much better. A single imprint might not be interesting, but how you repeat it and what you do with it and what happens when you do that again and again is when it gets interesting. There was that one person who used uh, that, like a USB mm -hmm. uh, split in half. Right. It did make me think about how our lives are surrounded by outdated technology in a way that uh, is, is very far away from like a Sopia, you know? Oh wait, it actually worked. <gasps> oh, cool. Cool, oh. Oh, sorry, sorry there, green paint. Although, you can that. maybe use that, yeah. yeah. That, that'll be nice, so look, and that's absorbent. On the inside. Oh, it's absorbent. So one of the assignment responses that I really liked was broken Barbie. So they imprinted a Barbie onto paper and it reminded me of this series of works that were half performance, um, but also prints by Yves Klein, where a woman would take her painted body mm -hmm. and press it against a uh, canvas or paper. It's a complicated thing, because it was like a male artist like using a woman's body I don't think it's brush. that complicated. I think it's just sexist. <laughs> yeah, well, but, uh, but it reminded me of that. And it was it, sort of like taking control in a way that uh, it was a kind of a, a woman claiming, claiming control over. over Barbie. Yeah. So you finished your cork. I it looks my cork. really good. It looks almost textile-like. Yeah. I think when you do a repeated pattern, it tends to come across as a fabric. And one person did do a t-shirt. So Sarah, one of the other ones that we both really liked uh, was involved tampons. Yes. One uh, person dipped unused tampons yep. into red paint, which was an interesting color choice. Yep. And I liked it. I liked, you know, talking about absorbent materials. That's certainly something that can print with um, better success. I'm not sure about this. I was so cool in theory. I was so excited. Sometimes you but just have But in practice, to try it. it doesn't seem like it's as good as tampons. Oh, yours looks better. Ah, oh, fortunately okay. I'm still winning. We also had a great submission of someone who made an imprint of their bassoon reed, and I thought it was really nice that they used something personal. I like the bassoon reed because it reflected something about the maker, mm -hmm. um, but also made for a really interesting image. You're using the word interesting a lot, I know that. Oh, I'm doing bad art critique. <laughs> I'm doing the kind of art critique that you specifically told me not to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking of items you find valuable, uh, a few of you did imprints of books. I brought one that I felt oh! would be okay for us to um, uh, cut and yep. make an imprint of, and it is the German edition of Paper Towns. Marco Spuren. And I feel like if you wrote a book, you have license to destroy it. That is correct. The reason we chose Margo Spuren is because uh, I have several hundred copies of this book. Uh, my publisher, Hanser, has been very kind about sending me lots and lots of them. Sarah, I can't cut this. Okay. This feels wrong. It's painful to watch a book be destroyed. <laughs> nope. It's a really well-made book. Oh, God, my publisher well, did maybe... just... Hold on. Hold oh, on. one thing I thought we could talk about is how Sepiep said that you know, there's no real narrative when you're looking at, say, his 
his imprints. Do you need to make narrative conclusions when you look at an abstract work, right? Like a lot yeah. of times people look at a Jackson Pollock painting or whatever and say, it looks like X right. or it looks like Y. Or even if you like read a wall label oh, about oh. it. Oh, I do think that there's meaning outside of narrative. This just feels very fragile to me, like in a beautiful way. And mm -hmm. that's not a narrative experience, but it is a meaningful one. Like it makes me think about fragility, try to understand fragility in my own life. Well, and it's also kind of freezing the ephemeral. Like mm -hmm. this stick is something that's gonna rot and go away pretty quickly, but this print, may last a little bit longer, but it, it will also eventually Right, I mean, anytime, <laughs> anytime you're freezing the ephemeral, you have to think about the fact that you can only freeze it for so long. Maybe that's part of why it looks fragile to me. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, though. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of mine? <laughs> it's, it's painty. It's been painted. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've completed the assignment. <laughs> yeah. No one can say I didn't complete the assignment. All right, I'm gonna try one more. Now that I've got it really nice and soggy. That's not bad. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit better. You know Wendy White, the artist Wendy White? Yes. It looks like a yeah. really bad version of a Wendy White painting. It does. Um, See? Apologies to Wendy White. Here's my terrible Wendy White. We like your work. Oh, huge fan. And what are you saying about my work? It meets expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to keep making imprints, but we're going to turn off the cameras. Yeah, but uh, thanks to everybody who's participated in this art assignment and all the art assignments. Remember to tag your responses with the art assignment. And don't forget that you can go to either of our two websites, theartassignment.com or all.theartassignment.com to see what everybody has done in response to this project. You just got paint I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, but this Jeez. is not easy to work with.